Greetings from Castle Goring, from Mickey, Aurora, and from me. I hope you're having a good Easter Saturday. Aurora certainly is. <laughs> and on that note, I'm going to plunge right in with what Greg Jekyll says. Beautiful Lady C, greetings from the US and love and blessings to you and all your family. Thank you very much. I wanted to share an observation you may or may not agree with. Since the news of Her Royal Highness the Princess of Wales video and announcement, there has been a great outpouring in the US of love and support for her and Prince William and anger towards those who have trespassed against her, especially, and the royal family. It reminds me of when Diana died, although I know Catherine will be fine, when everyone turned against Camilla and Prince Charles and blamed them for her death. They have recovered from that, but look at the years it has taken. I can tell you there is a great rage and animosity against Meghan and Harry, especially now that the cancer diagnosis has come out and they have treated her and the family so abominably. They have absolutely been wiped out of the current news cycle and are facing anger and criticism here that rivals what happened during Diana's loss. People here are so disgusted by them, are so done and over them. I don't think Harry and Meghan will overcome this anytime soon. It has rendered them as mean, spiteful, out of touch, and as total traitors. They are not trusted and are mocked openly. They will always have their fans, but their mockery of Catherine will not soon be forgotten at a time when she is enduring such difficulties. I think they have made themselves totally irrelevant, just my opinion, God bless your sweet dogs too. And what do I think? Well, Greg Daykill, I agree with you. I think that they are indulging in a huge fight back. They have that ridiculously dreadful creature, the boozy guppy, are uh, sprouting all sorts of rubbish and conspiracy theories and nonsense. Clever people have started to understand it is better to be thought a fool than speak and remove all doubt. But of course, many of their Sussex squad are fools and they certainly have employed them, including the guppy who is clearly a total imbecile and spewing forth disinformation and misinformation, the way guppies spew forth water. You know, when we see through someone's actions that they are truly evil, and that they are truly destructive and that they are truly deliberate in the execution of their destructiveness and that their competitiveness and that their childish rage and that their jealousy and that their overweening ambitions, including for attention and to always be proven to be in the right, come at such a cost that they will drag anyone or anything down. I think it behooves us, as I think most sensible people have come to the conclusion, and I agree with you, pay attention because you are dealing 
with very destructive people and they're not going to change. They might get worse, they might pretend to get better, but they're not going to change. I think Meghan and Harry have finished off themselves. I think their followers have finished them off as well as themselves. Pam Smack says, Ray Boozy, even though I don't follow him, he's popping up on my X timeline a lot now, and he's Val. Considering he's linked to the Harkers, he even appeared on their Netflix show, so he must have the Harker seal of approval. The way he continues to go after the royal family, especially Catherine, now that her her cancer has been revealed, is bad, bad, bad for the Harkles. Boozy's constant attacks against Catherine and the royal family provide the contrast for how trashy the Harkles are versus the true royal elegance and class Catherine emits. Absolutely correct, Pam Mack. Absolutely correct. By their very actions, these people reveal who and what they are. The guppy is disgusting. If you read some of the gutty, guppies, really grossly, personally nasty comments, including about William and Catherine being old, not like Harry and Meghan, who are so young. <laughs> and, and the guppy has actually called William ugly. <laughs> I, I'm absolutely sure there's no such thing as a looking glass in the guppy's house. And I'm amazed that when he passes shop windows, that he doesn't recoil in horror and think, who's that guppy? <laughs> I mean, if ever there was somebody in a glass house who shouldn't throw stones about anybody else's oh, lack of physical attractiveness, it is the guppy. Now, I don't blame people for being ugly externally because some people are not able to have the plastic surgery that Megan has had. And some people also, plastic surgery wouldn't help. <laughs> the guppy is one of them. I don't blame him for looking the way he does. I blame him for what he is. So, yes, they should continue. They're digging graves for themselves. These people don't understand that the average person is basically decent. At least, let me rephrase that. There are schools of thought that 3% of the population is extraordinarily positive, good, attractive, whatever. And 3% at the other spectrum of the population is the absolute opposite. And within the other 94%, there are gradations. And in the middle, so at 50%, you get the mean, the average, the sort of ordinary in this case, half and half. That's all to the good. That's how nature sets things up. But you can be one of the top 3% that have been endowed by nature 
and be a horrid human being. And you can be one of the bottom 3% who have not been endowed by nature, and you can be a wonderful human being. The beauty of the human soul is that it shines from within and to an extent transcends the body. I wouldn't waste my time following anything that ridiculous man says or does. I don't think your time should be wasted on a bot creator and a misinformer of the highest order and a self-styled expert whose expertise is in bots. Just not quite the sort that he would like us to believe. Wind Song says, Mad, Meg and Hapless don't care what the British think of them, so get over it. They are going to do whatever they want to do, regardless of protocol or the feelings of either the royal family or the British public, or indeed, as they are proving, the American public. Because they are displaying, that, especially Meghan, that they have as much contempt for the American public as they did for the British public. And they are expecting the American public to swallow their nonsense and to believe all their rubbish and to ignore what we see, what we hear and what we observe in our perceptions because we have a brain and we use it. Yes, they don't care. They don't care. They have no care for the British public and they have no care because they think this side of the Atlantic isn't going to make them money. That side of the Atlantic is going to make them money. But their lack of talent, their lack of attractiveness is showing that people bought the royal dream and they're not buying the royally obvious nightmare. Ken Diar says, I'm saddened again by the amount of abuse members of the royal family have endured from the time Meghan Markle arrived on the scene. Since Harry is too ensnared to do anything to help them or himself, when is she going to get her comeuppance and be driven from the family? Or is this silly wishful thinking? Well, as long as Harry has some benefit to accrue from the association with her, and as long as she has some benefit to accrue from the association with him. She's not going to be driven from the family because he is a part of the family and so are his two children. When is she going to get her comeuppance? She's getting it. Look around you. She's getting it. Every single day she loses more followers. She loses in desirability. A right oik and a royal obscenity. The show that she has set up. The, well, Gwyneth, you'd really better be careful. I'm coming after your spot. And Gwyneth says, oh, that's what you think, sweetie pie, not a chance. <laughs> What's that foul smell? <laughs> Gwynny wants to know, What's that foul smell? Gwyneth, darling, that foul smell is the substance of which Megan is entirely composed. 
and if you find it objectionable, I would suggest you don't go and visit her because you will be blown away, especially when you go into one of those 16 bathrooms. She has created nothing but problems since she arrived on the scene. You know, I remember crossing paths with a fraudster who called herself a Rothschild. And I remember saying to the agent, I said, Jamie, I don't think this, you should be allowing this person to have the house because I sense that this individual is trouble and people divide up into two types. On the one hand, no matter what happens, everything turns out all right. And on the other hand, no matter what happens, no matter how well things are going, no matter how well things should go, things always turn out badly. I said, my sense of this situation is this woman is trouble. He talked me out of my observations. But I was, and we ended up slugging it out in court over a nine month period. And she pulled every trick in the book, including several years later, trying to say that the judgments were default judgments and that she had had no legal representation when she had been through a host of lawyers. And not only had she been through a host of lawyers, but she had also at the end of the day, because she kept on not paying her legal bills, she ended up at the end of the day representing herself and she tried to say she'd had no lawyers and no representation blah 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 and the judge threw it out that was years later after she had lost she came back for another bite of the cherry the point i'm making is people like that sociopathic people because in my opinion that woman is a true sociopath total fraud and phony as dishonest as the day is long and a liar of the highest order lies just tripped off out of her mouth in the most extraordinary manner this was somebody who I had no personal relationship with. And I'd had personal relationships with people who were equally malicious and equally vicious and equally destructive. I think Megan is a malignant narcissist who displays sociopathic tendencies and Machiavellian practices going off her conduct. I'm not even saying that I'm listening to what the psychiatrists who have said she is a, a malignant and narcissistic sociopath or people from the Sussex Survivors club such as samantha cohen i'm not even saying i'm saying of my own observation of this woman so it does not surprise me people like that come in and create havoc sociopaths have to create havoc they this is their driving force She kept 
her true self concealed sufficiently to actually make a success of her role in Suits, minor though it was, less than two minutes per episode for the whole of the time that she was on the show. That's not a star. But it shows she was a bit player and she was maybe low down on the totem pole, but she was still on the totem pole. Harry is too ensnared. Harry has also allowed himself to be ensnared. Harry has a choice. Harry has always had a choice. We all have a choice. I remember when I realized that my husband was extremely, extremely, oh, I'm going to try to find a word that's not too awful, disturbed, disturbed, and that he had huge substance problems. And thereafter, once the penny dropped, I tried to help him. I tried to get him to see the light, to sober up, to embrace goodness and have a, the desire to have a good life. But no, he didn't want that. He wanted to be right. Well, he wanted to be right. He was right. He wanted to be true to himself. Well, he was. Not with me around, however. But the havoc he created in my life and the havoc he has created wherever he's gone has been enormous. It's par for the course with destructive personalities. They destroy. That's why it's really important to surround oneself with constructive people. And we all make mistakes. And sometimes we need to relearn the lesson that pigs don't fly unless they're the castle goring pig. But the real pigs, the Megans of this world, the Colin Campbells of this world, the Harrys, that's right, no, the Harrys of this world, they don't fly. And they can tell us still they're blowing the face that what we're seeing is a flying pig and maybe they will take our booking first class $895,000 for a trip for 10 minutes. Great deal, wonderful bargain. Jump on it, sail, sail, sail. And we're supposed to believe it, I don't think so. Heidi Miggs says, the royal family did not have these types of personal attacks until tacky, trashy Rachel came onto the scene. Not on a daily basis. Not that I can remember anyway. Anti-monarchists have been grumbling for a long, long time and have commented on the family, but I can't recall it being slanderous or libelous on a routine basis. Not like we're seeing now. No, not like we're seeing now because it is being orchestrated by a creature of supreme malevolence. Supreme malevolence. And she has a collusive partner. I'm sorry, but I don't I know I'm not unique in thinking that all of this on one level is such a massive waste of time, energy and opportunity. 
And on another level, it is instructive because the world is full of both good and evil. And we need to remember that evil occurs within our life on an everyday basis. Little evil, big evil. Not that every day we have evil, but evil is an everyday occurrence, meaning a common or garden thing. So, and yes, the family has been under the most tremendous onslaught as a result of letting in this viper, which is, in my opinion, what Megan is. But you know, we all make mistakes. We all, well, not we all, many of us, I should say, and I include myself in that number, make mistakes. I have all my life letting people into it that I rarely, if I had been a little bit more judgmental, wouldn't have let into my life. And I have given people opportunities that I shouldn't always have given them. And some of them have taken advantage. You could say, well, I'm more open and flexible. I mean, let's give Harry the benefit of the doubt, because I think he started out feeling that this was a genuine love match. The only thing is, the penny didn't drop, that it was a love match on the road to perdition and it was going straight to perdition and it has gone straight to perdition going off their own conduct and the results of their conduct jackie says harry is a total fool to be dragging up diana's affair with oliver hall she harassed his poor wife in crazy ways and Kay Barchi says seriously Harry wants to dredge up his mother's squalid affair with Oliver Hall in 1994 as part of his legal proceedings against the newspapers what alternative universe is he living in ayahuasca 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 good windshield wipers drugs clear my mind the way windshield wipers clear the car's windscreen doria superb weed nothing clears my brains like drugs ayahuasca 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 So, we've just established what alternative universe he is living in. So, shall I continue? His mother behaved immorally, despite her pain over Charles's relationship with Camilla. She had absolutely no empathy for Diane Hall and Julia Carling. The Hall's marriage survived. But Julia Carling divorced Will after only a few months of marriage. Diana was desperate to destroy Oliver Hall's marriage and take him away from his children. And when he returned to his wife, she bombarded him with nuisance phone calls. Harry, please wake up and get out of the stinking swamp you are wallowing in before you drown. That might actually, in figurative terms, be the only possible 
outcome, it certainly looks as if it's going to be the only possible outcome. I think it is truly shocking that Harry would have brought up Diana's affair with Oliver Hall. When Diane Hall had to report Diana to the police and the police had to investigate her harassment and nuisance calls, hundreds of calls in a matter of a very short space of time. I think it was 300 calls. I mean, not only does it show that she was unhinged, but it also shows that she had absolutely no scruples, no conscience, and was prepared to do anything to get her own way. And all this posturing about, there were three of us in the marriage. I've always said, the number was a lot greater. There was Charles, Camilla, Diana, and we could add at least one zero, and I'm being a very, very conservative. Not to mention how she also set out to destroy Tiggy Leg Burke's reputation. But that I don't think will come up because that's not actually related to the marital issue that we are discussing at the moment. It's so sad. I mean, it's so destructive. It's so uncalled for. It's so totally unnecessary. But destructive people will destroy. You sort of just want to pray for them. But is that going to help? <laughs> My prayers have never been answered where destructive people were concerned. Never. Wilson May says, I was gutted watching Catherine's video message, but in delivering, she showed the promise of the outstanding queen she will one day be, God willing. No decent person could listen to her and feel anything other than compassion, respect, and admiration. This is not top of mind for anyone I know, but today I read that the Wales family traveled together by helicopter from Windsor to Anne Hall for the Easter holiday. You joked about Harry and Meghan not needing a plane crash to make their dream of becoming king and queen a reality now that Catherine and the king have cancer. But I am surprised the Waleses are allowed to do this. I recall that Queen Elizabeth had asked William not to travel with George on the same aircraft, fearing it would could result in a constitutional crisis for the monarchy in the event of a tragedy or am i mistaken you're not mistaken sadly william is obstinate william is stubborn william is also his mother's child william is also harry's brother william may be the good and productive and positive side of the coin and Harry may be the flip side of that coin but they are both coins William if he has any sense of responsibility for the crown and understands that its interests should come before his vision of his family as a unit, he would actually travel separately. But 
I'm going to throw this out as an idea. Has it occurred to people that he loves his family so much that he wouldn't want to be without them? And maybe he feels, if something were to happen, better all of them go at the same time than that some be left behind. To have to face the struggles and deal with the problems and the issues and the hassles that he has had to deal with. That is a possibility. Either that or it's just obstinacy. But whatever it is, it's his choice and it's Catherine's choice because she has a say in this as well. And I would like to see them travel separately. The rule was the air should not travel in the same areas as the monarch. And the heir's heir should also be split off as well. So they should travel in at least two separate helicopters. That's always been the received wisdom. What can I tell you? If William wants to think differently, it's his life. And if Catherine goes along with it, it's her life. And it's their children's life. And maybe they would prefer, if something happened, to all go together. That would show that they certainly do function as a unit. And if it had no other benefit, it would show that all of the stories that have been emanating from the United States of America about William and rose bushes and all sorts of other flowers are just utter rubbish. And so, we will end with, well, 57 season says, my understanding of the Where's Kate campaign came directly from the William Morris Endeavor Agency. If you look at Kim Kardashian, Cheryl Crow, Blake Lively, and who represents them, they are all represented by the same agency, William Morris Endeavor. Disgusting. Well, let's not forget Stephen Colbert. But that doesn't mean that William Morris Endeavour has actually created the campaign so much as it is a stable where people understand, where, shall we say, the talent understands that they're lucky to have such good representation and they play ball with the wishes which i don't think would be now you have to all go out and trash catherine and you all have to follow the lead i don't think it's quite as obvious as that but i think there is definitely the ethos at play, which is that, well, you know, we've really, I mean, Megan's a client, mm, would be such a pity to let her reputation be destroyed. Mm, isn't this a golden opportunity? And then, of course, let's not forget Chris Jenner good friend of Harvey, whatever his name is, Levin, of TMZ, or maybe I should have said 
working partners or colleagues, because do people like that have friendships? Possibly they do. Possibly they do. They're supposed to be honour amongst even thieves. So possibly they do have friendships as well. Not that for a second I'm implying that any of them would be thieves. It's an expression that means that even amongst the lowest, there is usually a sense of right and wrong. And maybe it's misguided loyalty. I don't think it's carefully orchestrated by William Morris Endeavour. But I think it's, we're all members of the same club. Let's take out our whips and join the club and flog those winners across the winning line. And on that note, I'll say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. If it has, please keep the questions and comments coming in so I will know what you would like us to be speaking about. Okay, take care, God bless, and happy Easter for tomorrow. Thank you so much. Godspeed. Bye-bye. And if you have truly enjoyed this, would you care to like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell, and take good care.